Welcome to Poems You Need, where two poets share the poems that sustain and inspire us. Hi, I'm Melissa Studdard. And I'm Kelly Russell Agadon. And today we're sharing poems from Pamela Ushuk. And I'm going to start with a poem called Self-Help Manual. And it's from her book called Crazy Love. And I chose this poem because... Well, first of all, I just love the concept of it, the idea of writing a poem that is a self-help manual, um, and it's about helping the self, uh, not how someone else can help themselves. But of course, we know that the, when someone leads by example like that, it helps everyone. So that's a really wonderful thing. And I also, in this poem, one of the things that really stands out to me that really drew me to it is the the way she acknowledges really both the dark and light sides of her own nature in a really accepting way. And I think that's something that's really difficult for us to do as humans. I know I grew up really trying to, to hide and avoid the parts of myself that I didn't feel were correct or beautiful or appropriate or whatever. So this is a poem that I need and I feel like I've always needed and I wish that I actually would have discovered a lot earlier. So self-help manual. At my best, I am the eye of noon staring beyond itself. Worst, the updraft of a Harris hawk before it tucks black wings to dive, severing the pigeon's neck. Sometimes I am as stubbornly habitual as the pigeon shitting on rose leaves and the new laid bricks, beak clicking like a broken watch on a neighbor's sidewalk strewn with pesticidal seeds. Other times I am dreamy as a wolf, checking its paws for spores left by the falling Arctic moon until persistence hardens my will, and I become that June bug banging into the autumn screen that's outlived summer's need. I will carve a guitar out of water, then swim its length. I will grow peaches on a grapefruit tree, grafting limbs to shattered hearts. I will chew blue glass until it releases the captive language of stars. I will lie, dig up the sewer leading to a sticky drain, learn the clogged pipes of hatred, of scorn, then flush them clean. I will be more gullible, believe the horizon when it shouts light. I will be the torture rack that stretches out my own truth. Wow. Um, first, the title is brilliant. I love that title. I mean, if I saw that in a book, that's the first poem I'm going to go read. Mm -hmm. um, but then the list of images that come comes after, and there's so many brilliant moments in here, but the one that really stood out for me was um, the June bug. But not only is it the June bug on the screen, it was the screen that outlived kind of it's, it, it's not needed. Um, it had to do with summer. And then the, I will chew blue glass. Um, and the captive capture language of stars, the captive language of stars. It was, it was all of her, her images just kept expanding. You're so right. And I, I know the listener viewer can't see the poem, but there's a, a little stanza break between the, where the June bug and the screen happen. And then going into the next set of images that start with carving the guitar out of water and the, you're right, the images have a sort of expansion. And then when they cross over into that new stanza, they actually move from being literal to being surreal. And they just become more and more surreal. And that also was just a delight to me. When I got to that part in the poem, I was like, okay, we're actually in a different universe now. It's like we have stepped from one dimension into another. And now we're in this surreal space where peaches grow on grapefruit trees, you know? Right. What a smart, um, you know, decision. Cause you're always, when we're creating our poems to decide like where to have a stanza break or that, but yeah, the poem just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. It was a beautiful choice. And, um, 
you mentioned in the beginning, well, not you mentioned, you read about the birds and that's my poem. Um, there's the, um, I think it was a hawk killing a pigeon. And um, I have a poem that I'm sharing today about a hummingbird. And that poem is called Green Flame. I'm actually not going to say too much about it because this poem was really moving for me when I first read it. And I don't want, you know, the listener or anyone to um, know too much about it. I'm just going to start reading. It's called Green Flame. Slender as my ring finger, the female hummingbird crashed into plate glass, separating her and me before we could ask each other's name. Green flame, she launched from a dead eucalyptus limb. Almost on impact, she was gone. Her needle beak opening twice to speak the abrupt language of her going. Taking in the day's rising heat as I took one more scalding breath, horrified by death's velocity. Too weak from chemo not to cry for the passage of her emerald shine, I lifted her weightlessness into my palm. Morning doves who moaned, who, who, oh who, while, sh- while her wings closed against the tiny body, sky would quick forget as soon as it would forget mine. Mm. I love the way you read that with the the sounds really emphasized with all that internal rhyme and um, just the the rhyming sounds of the vowels. So this poem, yes, I remember this. It it was in uh, the Poem a Day series. I think it was when Joy Harjo curated it. Um, this was one of the poems that that she featured and. Um, it's also in Pam's newest book, Refugee, which is a wonderful book. Um, and it's just the poem is so intense. I mean, looking at the similarities and the differences between this poem and the one I just read uh, is so interesting to me because the one, well, they both have all the beautiful imagery, but then one feels like such a compact moment. And the other one feels more like a listing of these, you know, these different things that build up into um, the sort of the final closure of the the poem. So it's just a, it, it's amazing that this is the same poet to me in some ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. It really shows her gifts as, um, you know, and this is a smaller poem, just like, you know, a hummingbird. Right. Um, but so many layers, the speaker, um, the mention of chemo, um, you know, the the hummingbird and this idea of, you know, witnessing it. it for me, it's as somebody who, you know, is a bird lover and, um, you know, the pain of, of, of witnessing, you know, an, an, a being's death. Um, and this poem, when, when I first read it, you know, I, I was weeping, like tears were coming out of my mind because there's also the speaker we know is going through something with the chemo. Wow. Um, so it, I felt like I was just, I was crying for everyone. It, it was just, I thought it was just in that last line, which I want to say again, um, sky would quick forget as soon as it would forget mine. It was that moment where the speaker's kind of saying, you know, this bird died and someday we all will. Right. Um, and, and that idea of being forgotten. And sometimes a poem you need is one that really makes you feel and, and cry. And I really needed, I needed a good cry. So this was the poem I needed this week. Yeah. And I think, you know, that ending, it, it's strange to me sometimes how what's sad and but also so truthful can also be comforting in a strange yeah. way. Like the idea that the sky would quick forget them both is it's also it, it's like sad. It's like, yes, we'll, we'll all be gone and we'll be the sky will forget us. But there's also that feeling of it going on. It goes right. on. And that's comforting in its own way. Life will continue on, 
And right. I, I also, I really admire the choices she made with language in that last line. Like, you know, the grammatically correct thing would be to say quickly forget, but, and you know, she knows that she has been teaching English forever, but mm -hmm. as a poet, this is the kind of choice we can make. She says, right. quick forget, and it makes it a quick forgetting. It makes it quick like the little hummingbird. It makes the line skip along. And it's just such a really intelligent, beautiful choice. Yeah, that's really, I'm glad you pointed that out because, and, and you had mentioned too, the music throughout it, by, by choosing it out quickly, like you said, quick forget, you know, the music and the sounds of that and the rhythms of that, um, it's all throughout this poem. The poem is like, just even the beats are like like little hummingbird wings throughout. Oh, that's beautiful. That's what I'm taking away. <laughs> thank oh, you yeah. for choosing thank that. You. Yeah, and thank you for yours. Uh, they, another good pairing. Thank you for celebrating poetry with us today. Information about the poet and works featured can be found on the episode page. And if you enjoyed today's reading please press the like button and subscribe so not to miss another poem. You can also share the episode with a friend, and we hope you do. Until next time, we wish you beauty, inspiration, and very meaningful days. May you always have the poems you need.